In 2005, the US Secretary of State published a massive document called the Unmanned Aircraft Systems Roadmap 2005 to 2030. This document explained their plans for aircraft to carry out surveillance, reconnaissance, and indirect fire. In section 2.1.12 of this document, a plan was presented called Broad Area Maritime Surveillance, or BAMS. This section described the need for an unarmed and unmanned aircraft that could fly 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and act as a low-hanging satellite. So now, in 2021, what does the US Navy have to fit this requirement? Introducing the MQ-4C, a 15-ton unmanned drone which is honestly one of the most interesting looking planes I've ever seen. Thanks to its massive wings, this aircraft can fly for 30 hours straight with a top speed of 357 miles an hour. Since its introduction in 2015, this has been a staple for maritime intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance for the US Navy alongside its brothers, the MQ-1 and MQ-9, who are smaller and now carry weapons. While only having to refuel every 30 hours or so is impressive, it's still not exactly ideal for cost or convenience. This is where the story of this video comes in. Back in 2002, an eccentric Swiss explorer, psychiatrist and environmentalist called Patron Picard travelled across the USA to talk to pioneers of solar aeroplanes such as Paul McCready and Bert Rutten. See, Patron wanted to design a solar plane of his own, but this time he wanted it to charge during the day so it could store enough energy to continue flying during the night. After travelling across the USA with his newfound knowledge, Bertrand presented his idea to the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. The institute agreed to run a feasibility study of the idea, and leadership of the project was entrusted to André Borschberg, an engineer and professional pilot. Bertrand and André formed a friendship and began developing the solar plane, named Solar Impulse. In 2006, construction began on the first prototype after years of development and simulations. Then, in 2009, their first plane, Solar Impulse 1, took to the skies. The Solar Impulse 1 weighed just 1,600 kilograms and could hold one pilot. Across the wings, there were over 11,000 solar cells, which could generate a maximum of 45 kilowatts of power. That's around nine times the amount of an average solar array on a home. The plane was powered to a cruise speed of 43 miles an hour by four 7.5 kilowatt electric motors, each with a 3.5 meter blade. However, the real revelation was in the energy storage, which allowed the plane to fly for 36 hours straight. This was in the form of a 21 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, but also by gravity storage, known as potential energy. To do this, the plane would fly higher in the day, so it could use less power at night by gliding down and losing some of that extra altitude. But this wasn't enough for Bertrand and André. While preparing for the continental flight across the USA, which they completed in 2013, the pair began work on Solar Impulse 2. This time, the plane's motors were upgraded from 7.5 to 13 kilowatts. The 11,000 solar cells increased to over 17,000, providing 66 kilowatts of peak power. And the battery capacity grew from 21 kilowatt hours to 164 kilowatt hours. The final weight of the Solar Impulse 2 was 2,300 kilograms, with a cruise speed of 56 miles an hour during the day which was reduced to 37 miles an hour at night to save power. But how long could this plane fly for? Well, theoretically, in the correct conditions, forever. The limiting factor being the human pilot, who could only sleep for 20 minutes at a time using a primitive autopilot system. Despite this, during 2015 and 2016, Bertrand and André took turns flying the plane and circumnavigated the Earth. 
They did the trip in 17 segments, with the longest section taking 5 days between Nagoya in Japan and Hawaii, USA. This was a huge achievement for the team and solar powered flight as a whole. But what happened next? How does it relate to the unmanned aircraft systems roadmap from 2005? After the flight, not much was said about Solar Impulse, and it seemed like it was the end of an incredible 14 year project by two incredible friends. However, in 2019, the Spanish American company Skydweller Aero brought the Solar Impulse 2, ready to give it a new lease of life. Founders Robert Miller and John Parks saw the opportunity to use the technology from Solar Impulse 2 and combine it with more advanced autopilot systems. This takes out the need for a pilot and will enable the plane to fly for up to 90 days straight with a 400 kilogram payload, enough to carry, say, some telecommunications and imaging equipment. Now, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, that sounds pretty ideal for the broad area maritime surveillance project the Navy outlined back in 2005. Well, it looks like they are thinking the same, as they have recently awarded Skydweller Aero a $5 million contract to demonstrate the technology. While the plane may not be able to replace everything the MQ-4C does, it will definitely be able to replace some of the work, at a lower cost, with higher convenience, and lower emissions. Truly a win-win scenario. So after 16 years, it seems the US Secretary of State have finally found what they're looking for but little did they know it was actually being developed the whole time. Thanks for watching this video, I found this story really interesting and hope you did too. Please subscribe and like the video and comment what you think the future of this project is below.